Hi, gang. Welcome back. So if you remember in part one, we found that Mandy here had some problems with her shoulder and we did correct some, some different things, but ultimately we found that some of this is coming from her neck area, which is oftentimes what we find in shoulder problems. Now, it is interesting to know that a lot of times people will come into my office and they will swear to me that it's their shoulder that hurts. And it is their shoulder that hurts. But that doesn't mean that that's where necessarily the problem is. It could be coming from the neck. could be coming from other places. And oftentimes, if, you know, if I don't explain it correctly or emphatically enough, the patient will actually get a little irritated because uh, they don't feel like I'm actually working on the right problem. However, when we fix their neck and their shoulder pain goes away before they get off the table, all is forgiven. <laughs> so it's a good thing. So um, we found a problem in her neck, and we're going to look at that exactly to see where it is. In this case, it's the third cervical vertebra, which we in the neck we start at C1, and we go all the way down to C7. And her, so hers is at C3. So we're going to just check here. Push here for me now. here. Turn this way. Okay. All right. So we're going to come right over here and just let everything relax there for me. Good. That a girl. Wow. She's, she <laughs> liked that. <laughs> she liked that one. Did y'all hear that out there? Everybody out there in chiropractic land, did y'all hear that beautiful noise? That's a great noise. Some people think that's a bad noise. It's a great noise. It's it. How do you spell relief? That's what it is. She's already laughing and feeling better. Did that feel okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's continue on. Uh, give me some pressure here. A lot of times after I adjust somebody like that, they're just like, they get this big endorphin rush and, and all these opiates are released into their system and they just kind of zone out on me for a minute. They just feel so relaxed and so good. I have to like wake them up and bring them back to, to here because this, I can't do this without them. They, they need to be present with me. Push, there you go. Here. Okay. Now, oftentimes when we, if we've done this correctly and we get to this point here, her arm will actually go weak at this point. And, and that's basically saying we've cleaned everything out of that. All the reasons why her shoulder is, is broken are fixed. And now she's trying to push, but she just can't. It goes weak. So we'll take her out of that. And then I always like to recheck the muscle, make sure that we've done everything correctly. So turn your arm that way and push back for me now. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> You've got a lot of strength in there. That's what happened, right? You can feel the difference, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we did get everything that was supposed to be doing that. So one of the techniques we use for that is we tap the muscle like this. If anything wasn't found that needs to be found, when we retest the muscle, it'll be weak. Push back for me real hard. And it is not. It is rock solid now. So... That is fixed. So her shoulder problem is in effect fixed. So uh, to kind of recap, what we did was we took a little bit of a history. We found out that, you know, she didn't fall off a turnip truck or anything. It just started hurting, insidious onset. So uh, we knew for, for a 
pretty good certainty that she didn't have any major rips or tears or anything in there, especially with her age being that way. So we checked all of the different muscles in her shoulder. We checked all of the rotator cuff muscles and a bunch of others to find out what the real problem was. I could only find one single muscle in her shoulder that wasn't working. It was this upper trapezius, which I know a lot of you guys are having problems with that muscle. You're begging your wife or your son or your cat to come over here and massage it, if finding anybody you can to do it. And that's what her problem was. It was so intense, it was so spastic that when she when we went to test the muscle, it wouldn't work. So we actually went to work on that muscle. We found that she had a vertebra in her lower uh, thoracic spine. T10 was out of place. So we adjusted that. There was a few more acupressure points that needed to be stimulated to get the communication in the body reestablished. And then we finally found that she had a problem up in her neck, and it was the C3 vertebra, the third cervical vertebra. And I didn't make a big deal about it on the film, but we don't just grab the neck and start twisting it and hope that it works. We actually test to find out which position the head needs to be in. Does it need to be turned to the left when we adjust it, or does it need to be turned to the right? Does it need to be in extension, or does it need to be in flexion? Which angle should I, should I push when I drive? Should I drive up or should I drive down? All of these things make a, a, an important difference and can be the difference between success and failure, which in this case means either correcting your problem or not. So I think it's very important. Uh, you know, early in my career, I didn't know any of that, and I didn't do any of that for years and years. I just adjusted people and hoped they got better, and most of them did. But this ensures that we just get a little bit more specificity and we have a lot better chance of getting them better. So let's have you sit up for me and let's uh, see how that shoulder is feeling now. So, Mandy, you had your first uh, chiropractic neck adjustment. How, how did it go? It went really well, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I do, too. I think it went very well. But I do want to let you know that sometimes, in about 10% of the cases, the person can actually get a little bit sore from that, okay? You know, it's kind of like going to the gym. If you haven't been to the gym before, you go to the gym, you work out, you're going to feel worse, actually, before you actually start to feel better. So if you feel worse before you feel better, don't worry or don't panic. That's normal. And what I would recommend that you do is to take an ice pack and put it directly on your neck for just 15 minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. That will uh, actually help bring that any kind of swelling or inflammation or heat kind of out of that. And I would do it every hour until you start to feel better, okay? okay. So, uh, and that's good for you guys too. If y'all have any problems like that, anytime you hurt yourself or you sprain an ankle, for heaven's sakes, don't put heat on it. Always ice that area down. If there's any swelling in something, you do not want to put heat on it. It's going to cause it to swell more. So in her case, I think she's going to do just fine. But I like to send people home with that kind of word of warning because I've had people come to my come to me before. Yeah, I went to the chiropractor before, but I actually got really sore and I felt a little bit worse. And I said, well, did the doctor explain that that was probably what's going to happen? And they're like, no. So I always like to explain that to them. Kind of like pulling a splinter out. It's going to hurt a little bit worse, but you'll be fine. Normally they will report, yeah, I was sore for a day or two, but after that I feel like a million bucks. So I hope this has been of some benefit to you and helped you. We look forward to seeing you in the future.